Thanks for tuning in to another video on irishracing.com. Today I'm heading to Paddy Toomey's yard in Tipperary to get updates on all his stars for the coming flat season. Some of my owners tell me I have to do better every year and I'd agree with that, to try and train better than you did the year before, to try and be better than you, you were the year before. Um, how you quantify that, I'm not sure. Uh, prize money, winners. I, I'd like to think that to get the best you can out of every horse in your care and to improve your way of training and to improve um, how you train them, how you deal with them, to be more competitive at all levels, at stake levels. You know, I'd like to be more involved in the top level of racing I enjoy racing, you know, all racing, but I enjoy racing at a high level. I enjoy training fillies that, you know, might be important for mares in the future. Um, so how do you rate success? Uh, as I say, better year and year. So you'd like to train more winners if you could. You'd like to earn more prize money. You'd like to finish as high up the trainer table as you can. Um, I haven't the numbers in training probably to be, to be competitive, you know, I've even though we've grown, I still have comparatively very small numbers to the other trainers, and uh, I'd like to keep growing the operation to, you know, to get to the, to get, you know, to be competitive on any given day. Um, I suppose you'd like to think when you go racing that the punters think you have a chance anyway, you know. So we do two two canters every day. Very simple way of training. They're not quite just two five furlong canters. Five lengths apart, hands down, ping along. I built the gallop and the first year we had the gallop, we took the horse to the Coventry, he beat Churchill and his maiden. And we kind of, we learned as we went and that's how we train, I just pinged them along like that and put good horses at the front and keep the routine like the lads in the yard start, you know, early in the morning and all the horses walk and, are, you know, before they ride out, like they all do an hour on the walker, they ride out, they do another three quarters of an hour, an hour on the walker. All the race horses go on the walker again, the evenings at three o'clock, they do a lot of exercise. Billy's, Billy's here two days and Shamey's here two days and Emmett McNamara is here Saturday and Scott McCullough on a Wednesday. So we're lucky, we have a good, good team there. And they're similar weights and, you know, they're, they're straightforward to work with. So. Shamey was obviously a new addition this year. Look, if Billy is suspended or injured, or you know, it's great to have someone like Shamey there. Uh, it's great to have his experience. We're, we're lucky that he decided to come here. Yeah. Sure, one look obviously won the Goffs Million last year, well documented. Um, I didn't feel like running her again after that, you know, to go to the races at the end of September and uh, win a race as impressively as she did. You know, you give her a month after winning, you're into November and there's not really a, you know, anywhere to go. I was asked a few times by people, why didn't I run her again? Really, you ran out of road with the, you know, the programme at that stage. Um, and I was keen then this year to start her in a winner's race as opposed to going straight for a stake because she had her one day at the races. She won impressively, you know, it all happened very quickly and I wanted her to have some more education. So we took her to Cork, just started her ready to run. And, you know, the ground, I'd say, wasn't, you know, what she'd be looking for. But she, she did what we hoped she'd do, as they say, she was one to 20 favourite. I never think I, I trained a one to six favourite before. I was looking down the track at one to 20 on the day and the first one had got beaten and I wasn't feeling great about <laughs> anything. And I said, at one to 20 now, I just want this to be over. But uh, she went and did it. And uh, you know, that, that was a good educational day out for her. And uh, if she, look, I'd say my thinking there is she won't go to Newmarket. I think that she'll stay in Ireland and either go for the Atezi stakes or more likely the Cornell's Court stakes at Leperstown with a view to going to the Irish Guineas. Um, I, I, I probably, you know, feel that I'd like to educate her a bit more along the way. I don't want to land her into an English Guineas just now. And uh, so uh, that's sort of what we have in our mind for her. So the, the, the two races she could start to run, and I think if she's going to run again before the Irish Guineas would be like the Atezi and the Colonel's Court, and preference probably to stay three-year-old only and go to mile. Mm -hmm. I think that she needs probably faster ground. I know that it wasn't fast today, she won the Goffs Million, but the way she accelerated mm -hmm. and the acceleration she showed on that sort of slightly softer ground, I, I think that was, you know, she did it in Cork, but on that 
you know, almost on a reasonable ground. It was less obvious, and obviously she wasn't at peak fitness and stuff like that. I think that, I think she'll get a mile, and I think she'll get further than a mile. And she's light on her, you know, she's light on her feet, and she's athletic. I think fast ground would be a big plus for her. So uh, she's one that I'd hope will progress all year. And I'm just not in a hurry to rush off to England to sort of give her a grueler on, you know, I just have taken the steps, look I take the steps with most of them, and I just would like to take the next step, with her career in mind as opposed to thinking about what's going to happen in three weeks time. Yeah. Very happy with how she did it there back in the Guineas trial, um, the other day in Leperstown. Um you know she had a good, you know she had two good runs last year and she backed that up. Um, I'd say the Irish 2000 or the Irish 1000 guineas is, you know, the rest she'll, she'll go for next. You know, she's entered in France, she's not entered in Newmarket, but I think in reality, I'd say it will be, she will go to Ireland. She won in spite of the ground, I would say the other day, you know, her farm last year when she beat Opera Singer, I think was on pretty quick ground and it was heavy ground, pretty heavy the other day. So I'd say she's pretty versatile. You look, she's a classy filly. She's, you know, every time she's gone to the races, she's, she's, she's done exactly what we'd hoped she'd do. And, uh, you know, the two fillies, pulled away the other day and you know she had every chance to curl up to be fair Natalia's filly was very good on the day and you know she put her head on and she you know the two of them passed the line well cleared the field and you know she she was brave to win it. Purple Lily again exciting filly uh, went to Galway started ready to run and you know was impressive I thought on the day she did everything back to front and still won um, and I was keen a bit like the other fillies to run her back this season in a winner's race as opposed to a stake after just having the one run uh, as a two-year-old. You know, she, she's a filly came from the breeze up and as you saw this morning, she's a big strong filly, so I wasn't in a hurry to give her another run at two. I didn't think she needed it. Um, and we decided that she'd go to Nace and take on the Colts because I thought, you know, that she might be fit to do it. And you'd have to be very happy with what she did on the day in the ground against highly rated Colts. Uh, I think she was impressive. Uh, I had intended running her tomorrow in Gorn and that nice winner's race again the, the conditions were pretty favourable uh, she got two extra pounds for winning or whatever it was for winning two races as opposed to one uh, just for more education as opposed to anything else um, she will go for an Irish guineas I think she will not go for an English guineas I think she's a filly that will stay 10 furlongs in time I think she's very exciting um, I'd like to get another run into her, you know, of some description. Um, so, but she wouldn't have to. She could go straight to a Guineas now. I, I don't think we'll go to Newmarket. Look, it's, 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 uh, I train in Ireland. Um, and I'm a young trainer. In inverted commas, I'm not very young. But I'm a trainer starting out. And uh, Ireland is where I'm based. And yes, I'd like to win races internationally, but I'd like to win a classic and probably like to win a classic at home. I'd like to win a classic anywhere, but the Irish Guineas is, is something that, you know, the Irish races are something that are to the forefront of our mind at the minute. And if, if we're lucky enough, we will travel. You know, we're not afraid to travel, but right now, I think the fillies we have will probably all end up going for the Irish Guineas. Claremont Ferrand is a filly of Craig Bennett's. Uh, that uh, you know they're all homebreds and he has nice mares with good pedigrees um, I think she'll start in the maiden probably in six weeks time maybe early June she's a filly that worked very well last year and uh, has done well over the winter and we're looking forward to campaigning her Heart of Darkness uh, you know an important one uh, for Lady O'Reilly the late Lady O'Reilly um, she, we bought her as a yearling. She, she asked me to buy her a yearling and we, we went to book two together and we looked at a bunch of fillies and she was the one she liked and we bought her. And uh, she was nearly ready to run last year and she just had a minor setback. Um, so uh, she, um, she's trained well all winter and uh, we were hoping she'd run well going to Cork. She had a nice run and uh, came out of it very well and was ready to go. You know, I thought when that meeting came on last week, I thought that the race would be ideal for her, the six furlong maiden there. Um, her sister in England, the first fall of the mare, has won seven, I think, on the all-weather, you can correct me if I'm wrong, and hasn't won on grass. You know, maybe she's won one race on grass and six on the all-weather, but she doesn't like soft ground anyway. And uh, I think that the surface the other night was a help to her. 
Uh, I think she's a filly that has plenty of boot and she'll progress plenty. And uh, something like the Polonia Stakes in Cork is what I have in mind for her. And that's why I wanted to get her back out and win her maiden the other night. Hi, that's deep one. Um, he didn't behave himself very well there in the Bally Sacks. Uh, he didn't make it easy for his jockey. And, uh, you know, he paid the ultimate penalty for it in the last half hour long. But I, I think it was, if you take the positives out of it, I'm going to tell you it was not a bad run. And uh, I'm going to train him for the Irish Guineas. Uh, I think dropping and trip the way he travels, uh, I think Carlos has suited him in the past and I think it'll suit him again. And uh, the plan is to go straight to the Irish Guineas now. Fernand yeah, sure, and look the way he the way he travelled, and and you know Billy Lee doesn't look animated too often, but uh, you know the way you knew turning in that he couldn't sustain in the ground. Uh, you were hoping it maybe could, but between weight and the way he pulled, you know he just didn't give himself any chance. Uh, and uh, I do think the Guineas will suit him. I think he's hopefully he'll run a good race in it, and you know, won't you? Rising star at three one in Cork, come up last April. And uh, obviously, give me the beat by his chin him in the Marble Hill. And then he got a setback in Ascot in the, in the Norfolk and he hasn't run since. Um, he's in good form, he's training well. And the plan would be maybe to start him in the Lacken Stakes. And if that went right, to look at something like, you know, Commonwealth Cup or, you know. But he has to get out first and get started. Hi. But he's trained well all spring. And uh, hopefully we we'll get him back on track. So he obviously was fourth on debut, and uh, he's not the biggest man in the world, but he don't know that. Uh, and he did his winning then, he went to Cork, half one piece of work, and he beat Pipsy without coming off the bridle. And then eight days later he went and he won the sportsman race, and I thought that'd be it for the year. And he was there, and a week before the race I had him in the foreign final and I was going to forfeit him and I came out one day and I took the rug off him and he fired himself down and jumped up and bucked and said, right, you can run again. So he won, he won the foreign final as well. Um, and uh, again, I think he's a six furlong horse really. I know he won over seven furlongs in soft ground, but I'd say he could be taken on a stable mate in the Lacken with the same sort of, the two of them are rated 100 or 99 or whatever they're rated. So I'd say a similar profile. I'd say this horse has won on heavy ground, but I'd say would like faster ground, wouldn't you? Very straightforward. I think he'll give a syndicate great fun for the year. He's a good story and we don't have many syndicates, so it's, you know, good for here. And uh, they've enjoyed him and he's a very kind horse, and, wouldn't you? Procrastinate him. Um, won well on debut there at the Curra. He's a horse that, giant, you know, he came from the Breeze Ups in Ferry House last year, which actually was a very lucky sale for us. Norman Williamson, Williamson breezed him for uh, Mary Bell Farm. Uh, he's a nicely bred horse. He's a Sayuni full brother of Walker Marrakesh, who's a Group 1 place two year old of a Shamardal mare. Um, we went to the Curra uh, the first day of the year. He hadn't the whole pile done, a couple of breezes, and we thought he'd run a good race. And it was, you know, we were very happy with the way he won and put the race to bed. Uh, I think he's a horse with a bit of class. Uh, I suppose a race like the Tetrarch might be a race that would suit him there in the, in the coming weeks. Um, and if he won that, sure, all the options would open up for him. I think seven or a mile for the minute is a good trip for him. Countess of Tyrone won well at Galway last year. Um, she's very similar to her brother, Earl of Tyrone. Um, I think she's a stayer. Um, and the plan would be, if everything goes right, would be to start her next Friday night in the Noblesse Stakes in Cork for the year. She's, she won well on debut in Galway. And, uh, you know, I didn't have her that long when she won and she did it nicely. And I thought, they said to Robert Moran on the night, I said, we'll leave her now till next year. I think she'll, she'll progress plenty. So, And he comes back to Ireland for the summer and he enjoys those horses. If they're good, he enjoys having them and enjoys the races. And, you know, so we'd like to give him a good time if we can. Mystic Moon is a filly of Eddie Walsh. She's there. Uh, Lop de Vega again will be sort of a bit like... Uh, Alano, Sario, I think that she'll be sort of mid-summer before she gets going. I think very much a mile and a half. I think she'll win her maiden and probably whatever she does at three, she'll be better at four. Firebird is a nice filly that joined us last autumn from um, Rebecca Menzies. She'd one good run um, in air over six furlongs. Um, she's trained well all winter. Um, I think she'd like a bit of nice ground. 
So we're sort of, you know, I think seven furlong to a mile maiden on a bit of nice ground. So I'd hope, I'd hope she'd be ready to start sort of next month, but we're sort of on weather watch. Peggy O'Neill joined us last year from Joe Murphy's. She had a very good first run and a more disappointing second run than afterwards. Um, she, she's come into the yard there in, um, you know, as I say, over the winter. And she's trained nicely. Um, I probably think it'll be mid-season before she starts. Uh, you know, I would say sort of June onwards. Uh, by the time, you know, she'd be ready to go. Uh, she's a nice filly. She, she, she's big now. She's a big, big filly. And I think a mile, mile and a quarter there. And, you know, hopefully she'll win her maiden and go on and, you know, attain black type. Her sister's already bred a group woman. Uh, she's out of a Galileo mare. And it's important for her to be a winner and, you know, to get some black type. And, and I think whatever she does at three again, she's so physically, you know, she's so big that I think she could be better at four. Porter's place obviously was very exciting when she won a debut at the Curra last year. It looks a good maiden now with the benefit of hindsight. Um, unfortunately, she had a minor setback in the spring training and she will not be in the Guineas or the Oaks. I would say it'll be the autumn before she's ready to start. And I do expect her to be back, but I think it'll be start of September onwards, a couple of runs at three and look forward to her four-year-old campaign. Lady Tilbury uh, joined us from David Mernan last year. Um, she's a filly with good form. You know, every time she ran, she ran a good race. She seemed, you know, she five furlongs on a flat track seemed to really, you know, uh, be her jazz. And uh, we're delighted to have her. Um, and uh, I think when we have a bit of better ground there, sort of midsummer, you'd hopefully see her out there in those filly stakes races and, you know, in general sprints, you know. Um, Five, I, I don't know, she probably gets six, but she definitely looked effective at five for David, so we'll see how it goes. I think Laurie is a filly that uh, hasn't done anything wrong. She two runs last year. She won her maiden on debut in Killarney, and she backed up pretty quick uh, in a nice winner's race in Cork um, 10 days or two weeks later. Um, she's a filly that we decided to leave then until this year because she was a tall, light frame filly, and I didn't want to over race her as a three year old. Um, she's filled that frame and uh, she's filled her frame and she's training well. Um, I suppose we might start her in the next couple of weeks. There's a winner's race in Tipperary uh, next Thursday night. There's the Victor McCalment in um, Goran would probably suit her. But I think her early season target would probably be uh, the Ridge with Pearl Stakes uh, at the Curra in Guineas weekend. I would like her to run and probably the race in Tipperary, but one of those races beforehand. I'd say she's pretty versatile as regards ground. I think a mile, a mile and a quarter would be well within her compass. I think she's a talented filly and I'm looking forward to the year ahead of her. La Ila Mujeres. So she cost 330,000 in December sale. She belonged to Meidler Stud. Um, she had nice farm there. She won a, a novice. Yeah, and and uh, she won a handicap in. Might have won the, Might have won two novices or a novice and a handicap. Uh, white colours. Yeah, uh, Valmont. Yeah. Um, and uh, she was fifth in, in, in the John Musker Stakes, whatever it's called in Yarmouth. But she she had a you know she run she had good form and she looked progressive last year. She looks like ten to twelve furlongs. Uh, very much second half of the year. She's settled in well, she's training well, and we're happy with her. And the idea would be to try and win a stake with her this year, you know, this year and maybe even go on into next year with her if she's good enough and, and try and, you know, get her into being a stakes filly, group filly, whatever that is. But we like what we see of her and we'll take our time. You know, she's, I think, I think she won't run till, you know, those type of races, Monster Oaks, give thanks, etc., etc., don't really start until you know, I'd like to keep her fillies only. Um, and uh, so I, I think she'll uh, kind of, I haven't done any work with her. I, she's cantering well, she's training well. And I would say looking to start mid, mid season there, it's a good program for those fillies from June onwards. Oh, Super Sox is a nice filly. Had a good run in Dundalk on debut the other night. Uh, I'd say that was a good maiden that she was third and she was ready to start. I was keen to get her out when that new meeting came on. I was keen to get her out because, you know, ground has been soft everywhere, heavy. And I just wanted her to have a run. And I think she'll progress plenty from it. Um, as I say, when I stood in the stand, I thought it was a good race. And uh, 
she's a filly that I'm looking forward to for the year. Um, I think she'll progress stepping up to a mile and I'd be hoping that she'll win her maiden and progress through the ranks. We have a nice bunch of two-year-olds. We probably have 55, 62-year-olds. Uh, I kind of took a view there with the weather the way it was and the way everything was going. I decided that I wouldn't run any two-year-olds till after Punchestown and most likely not till the middle of May. You know, just with the ground conditions, weather, the whole lot, I kind of... I had a jockey getting very anxious there. He was liking some of these two-year-olds to relax. A lot of them are, you know, by good stallions and out of good mares, and they're nice types, and uh, we look forward to the season ahead with them. There's every type, and we've, we train for syndicates, breeders, you know, so we've lots of fillies. We always have lots of fillies because of the breeding background and, the, you know. So that's a horse actually belonged to the syndicate again, the King Coon syndicate. He's King Carul, uh, nice colt. Probably a seven furlong horse for middle of the summer by Mo Hatter, Harsh Marcus Tregoning Train, this is his first crop. Cahill Landers. Jan Oxbottom and Goss for 240. It's called Currowood. Nice horse. Okay, Ashley. C-U-R-R-A-W-O-O-D. Artelight horse that Ramiro Respeto bought in Goffs for 300,000. He had Madge won the Kentucky Derby. It's their first horse in Ireland. Wooden Bassett call gone out behind there, belonged to Fiona Carmichael. Memas called to Clarenham. Uh, nice horse, got 65 in the Sportsman. Run in May, I'd say. Kodiak called out of Bible Belt that Jesse trained. Run early, I think, five, six furlongs, run middle of May. Nice colt as well. Stash Spangled horse behind you, cost 180, belong to Vimal Cosle. Of a Galileo mare. Invincible Spirit Call, cost 36 in book two. Probably June or July, but a nice horse too. Yeah, he wasn't dear old Galileo, man. Max Day was out early that day. Good ones there now, and I'd hope that uh, I'd hope that mid May there uh, we'd uh, we'd uh, get going with them. It's a long year. No price for being the first one out. So the two-year-olds this time of the year stand in the stalls every day there. Uh, and when I jump them out, or whenever they get certified, they don't stand in them anymore. But just until we get them certified, I just leave them. So just quickly run to look, they're just, they're just to let you know what they are. The Ten Sovereigns horse, uh, homebred of Robert Moran's. That's a three-year-old. That's a Memas horse, cost 140 in Goffs. Belonged to Charlie Bond, he's a nice horse. The Acclamation you saw in the yard, the Kodiak you saw in the yard, the Mahatra you saw in the yard. This Memas you saw in the yard. Kodiak called out a Bible belt just on the yard. Blue Point horse, homebred of Meidler's just on the yard. Star Spangled horse of Vimal Cosler's, Amanda Skiffin and gave 180 for in the uh, RB. Invincible you saw on the yard. And Invincible from book three in Newmarket cost 70 grand. Earthlight just on the yard. Wooden Bassett homebred of Fiona Carmichael's out of a Seed of Stars sister together forever and forever together. First fall, nice horse. Mahatra horse. Con won the five furlong winners race with Jesse and uh, with the brother in uh, Tipperary last year, going to Hong Kong. Uh, that's pretty much all of them. There's 15 there in the lot. So. The, the two year olds, like those horses there, a lot of them are quite mature. I mean, I'm sure they're somewhere else, they might be even running, but they're sort of going to come on stream, I think, from mid May. And I think when they start coming, hopefully. You know, there's, there's a nice, lot of nice fillies here, yeah, there should be plenty of them come together. They then, as they're ready, will kind of put their hand up and say, I'm ready to do more, like that wooden bassett there's a huge backward horse, but he's a grand horse. You know, like he's, she gave a million six for the mayor, and he's the first foal, she won three, and she's a sister together forever, forever and together. Who's City the, who's the mayor? Fiona Carmichael, Signe is her name, she was with Haggis. Memas, Memas, Kodiak, Invincible Spirit, Invincible Spirit, Kodiak, Acclamation, Blue Point, Mohatter, Earthlight, Mohatter, Star Spangled, Wooden Bassett, Ten Sovereign.